All right, welcome everybody to our first Double Good Roundtable. Um, I guess we could just kind of kick it off and um, and ask how has COVID uh, impacted you, your seasons and, and you as coaches right now? Um, David, if you want to start, I know you're connected with hundreds of coaches. So what, what what's the kind of stuff you're hearing? Yeah, so I think uh, obviously COVID has played a big part in, in our preparation for the, for the coming season. Um, you know, the biggest concern for me really is the safety of the kids. You know, when Illinois does decide to resume where kids get to have activities, they have contact sports. The big concern is uh, making sure the kids are physically, mentally, and emotionally ready, you know, for that opportunity when it does present itself. You know, you, you win your, your games on Friday nights in the fall, but really you're, uh, it's, all, it's all about your preparation. You know, you win your championships in January and February you know, through August. And uh, that preparation obviously is not what it's been in the past. So it's a big, uh, it's a big change for a lot of, for a lot of kids. And really it's not a level playing field for all the kids because every kid's opportunity is a little bit different with their preparation. You know, depending where you live, maybe some kids could sneak into a gym and get a good workout in. You know, maybe some kids have some equipment in their basement that they get a good workout in, but not every kid has that opportunity. So really it's going to be, um, you know, it's hard to say what the impact is really going to be, you know, come, you know, that first game or that, that when that season does begin, we're going to find out, um, you know, um, how COVID really has impacted the preparation that the kids can, can go through to prepare themselves. And that's the biggest thing is, are they going to be physically ready for a contact sport like football? So that, that's a big question, Mark, and hopefully we'll have enough opportunity to get the kids, you know, sh uh, the strength that they need, the condition that they need, where they're not going to get hurt. And you're not so much worried about the wins and the losses at this point. It's really about their safety. And hopefully COVID doesn't play a major part in their safety. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, Brian, like you're a baseball coach, so your whole season was swiped, huh? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think David's making some excellent points there. We were kind of on the other end of it. We had all our preparation done. We had all our hay in the barn, so to speak. And uh, we were getting ready to play March 15th. Our last practice was March 12th. Um, you know, and since then, we've been really hamstrung in what, you know, we can do and, and can't do. So in Illinois, there's just a lot of unanswered questions right now uh, moving forward. Um, our athletic board of directors are supposed to meet, I think, sometime in the next month, and hopefully we'll have some questions answered as to what we all can and, and can't do with our guys. And again, like David said, to keep them safe and uh, back out on the field, hopefully sooner than later. Yeah. Yeah, and John, your team with basketball, you were just hitting your strides on the state tournament and then everything sort of cut short. So how did you kind of handle that with, with your athletes and your team? Yeah, um, you know, the toughest thing as a coach is to not have closure to a season. Uh, so while, you know, again, winning the sectional championship was our goal and it was phenomenal. But when you get to that point, as Gina could attest to better than anybody, uh, you know, you want to put yourself up with the rest of the state. And uh, we knew we had something special coming in. And I approached this year much differently. Um, throughout the whole season, I kept explaining. I mean, every year, of course, you want to try to win that gold ball. But, uh, you know, you need to have a lot of things go right for you to get to that point. And I knew we had the pieces. So our entire focus is just hitting stride at the right point. Uh, and after every loss, we just refocused on how we could use the loss to help us get to our ultimate goal. And, you know, the best four games of the season we played were our last four. And so the seniors, we were a very uh, senior-laden team. Um, they believed, as did I, that we were just scratching the surface of what we really could be together. Um, so that part was a little disappointing to not get to see uh, how much further we could have gotten. But more than that, even if we lost in the, in the next game, um, then you have closure. You have time as a coach to sit in the locker room, tell the team how much you love them, reflect on what you accomplished. Uh, talk to the seniors about um, suggestions and recommendations for, for how to take what they learned during the season and apply it to the, their time in college. And not having that closure, I would say, was much tougher than the actual not having the opportunity to compete for a state title. Um, and then, unfortunately, we haven't even had our end of the year celebration. Um, and the boys, you know, I, I tell everybody, you know, I don't need to go on Twitter and tell the boys I love them. If I've done my job as a coach, they know that, right? They know that from how you are in practice every day with them. You don't need to tell it to them in front of, in front of everybody. Um, but there are a lot of things I would have liked to have, uh, have said to them had I known that was our last day. I mean, we 
where I was up in Binghamton, Johnson City, uh, scouting two days before the season w was canceled. And uh, we were at practice that Friday, had the scouting report, went over the scouting report, we broke into our regular uh, uh, workouts, and uh, Josh Thompson gave me a call at about 4 o'clock during that practice and told me everything was canceled. So that's how we found out. Um, you know, the, the look on their faces was they just, you know, disbelief, as was the rest of the country. And, uh, you know, I just threw on music, let them scrimmage. I said, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll stay sharp. And uh, unfortunately, that was the last time I saw them uh, in person. So, yeah, John, I think that was a really, really hard time for everybody. I'm sure it's all over the country, too. With Section 1, which is the section that we both play in, there was really no ending. And, and the team that had this great win at sectionals um, never got a chance to, to, to carry on and, and, and show what they could do. And for a couple of you, it was the first time in a long time, I know in the girls' side, Putt Valley actually beat us by three points in a great game. And I think it's, it's, um, it's, it's very hard for me because, because school closed like the day after that. And I haven't met my kids except on Zoom or with, with group chats and things like that. So it's, very, it's been very, very hard to have an ending, whether it was a good one or a bad one. But um, mm -hmm. just to encourage the kids and keep them going. But I, but I think for the kids that want, it's, it's, you know, there's no state championship this year. And I'm sure it's the same out in Chicago. But, uh, but I think it was very, it's, it's just, just the indefinite part of it and how there was no closure. And again, no senior dinners, no senior awards, no end of the year. Um, team dinners or, or, or things like that, and I think it's been, I think I think it's been had a big effect on the kids too. I think that they're very very sad about it, especially this senior. So so uh, I think for people like John, it's been really really hard. Yeah, yeah, Adam. Like, how did it affect your seniors? So I mean, the the seniors obviously they had their football season, but they didn't have the end of their senior year. Which I mean, I would go back a million times and live my senior year. You know, it's such a <laughs> so sad. It's just such a I feel, I feel for all these kids. Yeah, you know, it, it, it was tough. You know, we're kind of in the same boat as, you know, what Coach Dave talked about. You know, we got our season in, um, had a good season, but we have a lot of multi-sport athletes too. Um, so a lot of the guys that I saw, you know, that we have on the football team, um, you know, lost their spring sports. So I have a lot of guys that do football track. Um, so, you know, as soon as uh, they kind of pulled the plug on it, you know, even though it wasn't technically football season, um, you know, me and my staff, we really kind of made it a point to reach out to them and, you know, really talk to them as a person versus just, you know, you're just a football player. Because um, as I think everyone said perfectly, you know, it's about the kids and, you know, to, to not have your senior year, you know, and especially your senior year with some high expectations, you know, it's a really tough spot to be in. So, you know, we had coaches across the board at Lawrence that, you know, were really supportive and, you know, kind of made sure that the kids had a, a shoulder to cry on or somebody to talk to or whatever the case may be. So, you know, when everything went under, um, it was kind of funny because one of the first conversations I had with you know, the football guys were, well, this shouldn't impact football season for this coming up year. And now here we are. So, um, you know, I kind of ate my words, but you know, and hopefully in Illinois it kind of clears up and, you know, we can kind of get back to some normalcy. Yeah. I mean, how are you all engaging your kids and your athletes? Um, is there, is there, is it on Zoom? I mean, are you sending workouts? Like what is, what does that look like? You know, yeah, you can only do Zoom workouts and things like that. And some of the kids, some kids play um, other sports. You know, most of my kids are two or three sport athletes. And um, even though there's no lacrosse season this year, they're still doing things with their coaches in lacrosse. So you try to get some agility and handball um, workouts and things like that. And with the kids involved through Zoom and things like that. But they also then have their AAU teams which are also trying to do that, the same thing. And that's another whole issue with the AAU because kids that are looking for college scholarships are, be, are at a great disadvantage right now. But, you know, the juniors are, that haven't really made up their mind yet or maybe wanted to have another look at, at uh, colleges, look at them one more time. I think it's been very, very difficult for them. So that's another whole sort of aspect of it. So you have to keep in touch with those kids to, you know, keep saying, you know, talk, talk, we'll talk to your coaches, talk to the college coaches, talk to them. You know, tell them everybody else is in the same boat. But if you don't keep communication, these poor kids are going to be lost. They're going to have a very, very hard time. We have a group chat, and, and kids are on it every day. And the whole team, and, and actually some younger kids are on it, too, and all the coaches. Yeah. You know, Brian, um, you know, David had mentioned you have uh, some athletes that could potentially be in the draft for the MLB. I mean, how is, what does that look like? I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, um, hopefully his name, well, the one kid that we have is Ed Howard. I actually, I spoke with him today. Um, good news to keep it some positive. He was named the Illinois Gatorade Player of the Year this morning. Oh, nice. um, yeah, kind of, kind of bittersweet because, um, and we weren't able to play, but it was nice uh, to be able to tell him and his mom and dad this morning oh, uh, that we were from Gatorade and he got that recognition. But uh, yeah, we like, like I think most coaches here, we have the group chats. Um, I do some individual texting with the guys, just checking in on them. Um, I thought David made a good point earlier that since we're not able to have contact with them. Each kid has different things. Some kids have, you know, decent gym within their house. Some kids just don't have much. Um, and they're limited to what they can and can't do. Um, so just try and answer their questions the best that they can and find out what they have and what they don't have and uh, give them um, the best thing to do with what resources they have. Yeah, you're right with basketball. A lot of kids don't have a hoop in their, you know, in their backyard. And all the, all the baskets have been taken down in all the parks in the town. You know, so, so much of that off-season conditioning program, obviously it's important that the kids are getting, you know, bigger, faster, and stronger, but so much, so much of it is really is the, the camaraderie part of it, right. you know, the, the team building aspects that you go through in the off-season to prepare yourself, you know, for the season. You know, we're doing a lot of, a lot of things on Zoom like everybody else. Our strength and conditioning coach is sharing videos, Zoom videos with the kids for workout routines and some of the kids are actually, you know, sharing videos, challenging their teammates with different types of workouts. So they're doing a lot of things on Zoom. Uh, we meet with the kids four days a week on Zoom. We have uh, Mondays and Wednesdays, we have offensive meetings on Zoom. And Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have defensive meetings and some special teams sometimes on Fridays. But we're, what you're really losing is that, that chance to, to build that team chemistry, you know, that bonding, that camaraderie. And that's so important, you know, especially – in every sport, but, you know, particularly in football, you know, you're relying so much on those 10 other guys on the field with you. You know, you're relying on those other, you know, 60 guys on your team. And to miss out on that opportunity to, to build that camaraderie, that teamwork, that trust, you know, that, that brotherhood, you know, you, you can't get that on Zoom. You know, so those kids not being in the same workout room together, you know, sweating together, pushing each other. Uh, making each other you know, measure up a little bit. You know, you miss those opportunities. So, again, we're, we're going to see what, what it looks like uh, when we resume, hopefully, sometime here soon. Yeah, I mean, and beyond, like, just the athletes, I mean, you know, the best teams feel like family, you know, and, and how, how, if any, are you reacting or, or, or engaging with your athletes' families? And, John, I'm sure you have some very sad parents. Um, how are you keeping their spirits up or – or the positivity there, even look, or even looking next year, or kind of still, I mean, to the point of closure, which is a valid one. I mean, are you looking ahead or thinking of summer? Or? Yeah, uh, a little of both. Um, just as disappointed as the athletes were, you know, your heart breaks for their parents as well. And, uh, you know, the amount of text messages I got from a lot of the parents within the few weeks after it was officially canceled uh, was overwhelming. Uh, and you feel for them, you know, your heart breaks for them. Um, especially those who, you know, a lot of the athletes are multi-sport athletes, but some of them, this was their only sport. And I can't imagine if your only sport was a spring sport and you missed that entire senior year. I mean, that's, that's got to be crushing. Um, we do, you know, I created a series of workout videos that the kids can do at home without any uh, equipment if they don't have any. And we supplement it with, with other things if they have some equipment. But like Dave said, I mean, it, you know, the, the training is a huge piece of it because you need to have the strength conditioning and this quickness and foot speed. But um, it's really being around each other and pushing each other and knowing, wow, you know what? I had a rough day. I'm going to meet with, you know, my brothers after school. We're going to do our, our speed ladder, our parachute workouts. And, uh, you know, I'm big into quotes. And Bobby Knight had a great quote. He said, you know, many have the will to win, but few have the will to prepare. And, you know, the guys – there's some guys who push themselves. There's others that would do anything that us as coaches ask them to do. But when we're not there, you know, I'm not, it's, it's, it's a different level that I'm sure they're putting in as if any of the coaches on the panel were standing there watching. Uh, most kids are going to push themselves to a different level if they know their coach is watching them. Uh, so my returning guys, you know, we're very young, very inexperienced coming back. I just stay on top of them constantly about, you know, did you get your workout in today? I just finished mine, trying to hold them accountable, selling different quotes 
about how Kawhi Leonard every day approaches the season as if he has to make the team. And meanwhile, he's, you know, one of the top five players in the league. Uh, and my seniors, it's really just about showing them I love them, right? Whether or not we won the state championship, even if we didn't have a great season. So my interactions with them are a little different. Uh, we do, you know, we did a game night the other night, nothing to do with sports. We played quiplash, we played, you know, gestures, and we just had, uh, we just had fun and just talked. And, you know, that's your second family, your team. So uh, just trying to know, let the seniors know I'm there for them, regardless of what happens moving forward. And trying to keep my younger guys, you know, positive and working hard, even though we're not doing it together. Yeah. And my kids have done some TikTok stuff too. That's <laughs> they, where they have a TikTok night and they, you know, which is sort of good. It, it brings the camaraderie back. And yeah, that's back. nice. They, so they make fools of themselves in a that's very- <laughs> <laughs> All the best ways. Yeah, together. Yeah, I guess that's a common theme. Of just the, the the best part about about a sport is is the team. I mean, it, it's it's such a feel good. You know, when you you win together, you lose together. So this is sort of such a it's a trip. This this world that we're all kind of trying to navigate. You know. Yeah. I think it's also a chance to, to teach them to to do things to play play you know pay for it and, and to help out. Our team's motto is hold the rope. I don't know if any of you are familiar with it, and, and it takes the entire team to hold the group. No matter what you're doing, and one person lets go, you know, the whole, everybody else falls. Um, and who do you want to hold the rope next to you? And who do you want strong? So we're trying to do a little bit of that and keep the team bonding together and actually raise some money for some local um, charities and, and doing things that way. That's great. I mean, you said yeah. fundraising, and I mean, I'm not saying it just because double good, but I mean, is fundraising even on anybody's radar right now? Or are we just trying to get back on the field or back in the gym? Oh, no, I think fundraising on a lot of people's minds. Um, I, 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 I think that I think I, I think not just my team, but other teams in Irvington, I know, are looking and I know double good is, is, is something that, we, that everybody's talked about because we feel like, as I said before, we have to do something to help all these people. And I think I think it just brings a whole team family together. And um, I know that over in Pearl River, I'm going to do a little bit with the dyes. They've they've uh, done a whole thing over there. Where they've been feeding people to a, a delicatessen over there. To, to sell the double goods through them. And um, I've actually spoken to a restaurant in Tarrytown, and I'm hoping it's going to do the same thing. So I, I just think I think that um, that these are ways of team building and team bonding. And um, and and this is important. That they do that because then they can push each other to work out. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And Not I, on the needle of pushing. <laughs> I mean, and we all know, you know, they they'll respond to coaches, but they respond to their peers even better. Absolutely. And uh, you know, you just want to get those seniors to pay it forward and generally want to see success in the program after they're gone. And once you connect with those first one or two kids, I mean, I was beyond spoiled to have a, a player named Drew Abate went on to play lacrosse at Georgetown, but he loved basketball, had the same vision as myself and was completely invested into helping me try to turn the program into a winning program. And the kids see that and they just keep paying it forward to the, the, the kids below them. And uh, one player in particular, uh, Rafael Velasquez, who is my leader in double good sales this year. <laughs> but he also, uh, when he moved into Rye, um, there were some great seniors that took him in and immediately accepted him. And he was one of the best players I had paying it forward to my younger guys. Even the last scrimmage that day where we found out the season might be done as a senior, but we, I had the senior scrimmage underclassmen and I had brought up a freshman just for the playoffs and he hit like three threes in the scrimmage. He's jumping up, chest bumping him. And it was really sweet, but he, uh, he did a handles from home fundraiser mm -hmm. and uh, it was four weeks, an hour uh, each session. And he did zoom workouts with local kids he took all that money. It was a couple thousand dollars. He ended up raising and, and uh, fed a lot of the frontline workers in the area. So it was really neat. Um, so uh, like what Gina is saying, it offered an opportunity to fundraise um, for others, which I thought was great. Mm -hmm. As far as fundraising for our program, you know, we're a little behind the eight ball because in the spring, we usually do our fundraising for the winter and from our, for our team camp in the summer, which it doesn't look like we'll be attending. Um, but you know, double good is, is very much on our radar to start up again, hopefully this summer so that we have some funds moving into next year. <laughs> moving forward, I think fundraising and, and partner with double good is going to be big because I think expenses and keeping our kids safe are going to be 
a lot higher than typical. Like, you know, taking a bus, how many kids can we put on a bus? Do we now, you know, for baseball, do we need two buses instead of one to keep the kids separated? I don't know, but it would just, I think there's going to be added expenses um, for our programs to where fundraising is going to be maybe more important as ever now. Yeah, and budgets are also going to be cut. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. Perfect. Well, that's, I mean, Adam, I'd like to, I'd like to steal some ideas from you, Adam. What are some things you guys are doing football-wise that keep your kids engaged? I want to steal some ideas from you. Yeah, um, so we're, we're actually – we're in a unique spot. Um, I'm not sure what other schools do. Um, our, our students are in a full school day. So our students are, are in Zoom from 9 o'clock to 2.45. Oh. Yeah, so they go through their full school day, um, which I, I don't know if that's unique to us, but – um, I, I teach in the building too, so I have five, four classes. I log in every day, teach my class, and go. But when they set the schedule up, they gave the students two built-in breaks. So there's like a 20-minute snack break, and then there's a 40-minute lunch break. Um, so as soon as everything kind of hit and the schedule came out, I made sure I jumped on that 40-minute break to schedule workouts. Um, so our entire program meets Monday, Tuesday, Thursday during that, that lunch break. And we do our workouts as a, as a program. Um, I take attendance. I treat it, you know, just like I would if I was in the weight room. Um, so, you know, I can obviously get on and see them work out and see what they're doing. Um, and then starting in May, we started to do position group meetings, um, which we broke the guys up into groups about what position they play. And, um, you know, honestly, in May, the, the position meetings had nothing to do with football. Um, and that's simply because I wanted just to check in on them as, as people and, 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 you know, how's school going? How's life? Uh, we use the last dance, the, the Jordan documentary to kind of drive our discussion. There's a lot of good nuggets in there for, I think, all sports. Um, so, you know, it's only a 30 to 40 minute meeting, but it's a chance for me to get in and talk to them, especially the underclassmen who I don't teach, um, you know, because they're going through the same thing and, you know, they're a little bit more immature. So um, we do those. We do the position meetings on Mondays. And then obviously in June, we'll shift to the more football centered stuff. So, I mean, really, I see my guys Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then I give them Friday, Saturday, Sunday, just to be, to be high school kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, this is all like incredible feedback and, and we don't want to hold you too long. So, uh, I mean, the theme of this was coaching during COVID. So, um, David, maybe you would want to start going around the horn and just like, what have you learned yourself as being a coach during this, during this time? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, they had, you have that saying, you know, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Um, I think that, that's, that's been proven false, you know, during this, during this pandemic. You know, I definitely learned uh, that you have to ad adjust and adapt with the times. And uh, that's one thing that we, we definitely had to do as far as, you know, staying in contact with the kids, you know, how we're keeping them engaged. Uh, you have to learn new tricks. You know, so we spend a lot more time on Zoom. And, you know, maybe we can't do what we want to do as far as, you know, getting ready for the season with the, you know, the weight training and the lifting and the running. But we can stay engaged with them and keep them on a good routine. And really just to, re to remind them about making good decisions. You know, the, the decisions that they make don't just affect them. You know, it affects their, their mom, their dad, their, their families, their loved ones. And we always want to talk to the kid about making good, healthy choices and make good decisions, you know, especially during this crazy time. And just remind the kids, you know, don't sacrifice a long-term goal for short-term gratification. You know, think about where you want to be in August, September, October, November. And so make sure you're making good decisions that's going to put you in a position where you're going to want to be when the season's over. So but really about myself, what I learned about myself is just, you know, really change with the times. You know, you have to be able to adapt, adjust, overcome, improvise, all those fun things that make coaching fun. How about you, John? Yeah, I echo everything David said. I think, uh, you know, just learning new ways to build that camaraderie when you're not physically present with the kids. And, uh, you know, you, you realize, I mean, I know I was born to coach this, you know, it's, it's funny. I love what I do as a teacher. It's by far the best job I could have. But my initial draw to teaching was because I wanted to coach at a young age. I knew it and that was my passion. Um, and this really just, you know, solidifies that even further. I mean, not having that interaction with the kids. It's really, I find myself, my, my, my poor son's nine years old and I'm doing drills with him in the driveway. And I have to remember sometimes he's not one of my varsity guys, but like, I miss it. I miss, I miss the teaching on the spot. I miss the correcting. I miss, I, I miss that look on their faces when 
they're able to do something that they couldn't have done three weeks prior, right? Whether it's reaching a weightlifting goal, increasing their speed, increasing their vertical. Um, but like what David said, it's just learning to adjust and learning that some kids uh, are actually a little more open when it comes to group chats and Zoom than they, they are in person. I think some of the kids have surprised me about speaking up when I, I, I haven't seen that when we're in a physical setting. So, you know, for, for some of them, it's not a bad thing. And seeing who steps up as a leader um, is very uh, important at this time. Yeah, how about you, Brian? Well, I mean, obviously, I mean, this has been really hard. Um, this has been really hard on us as educators, uh, coaches, to students, to families. Um, maybe I didn't learn anything new, but you learned some of the old lessons that, that you've known for a long time. Uh, to keep your energy on the things you can control, not the things that you can't. Uh, constantly reminding my guys, you know, you know, things like effort, attitude, staying positive, staying ready for when this does all end to be ready, um, be the best that you could be. Um, so really those type of things, some of the old, you know, lessons um, are really coming to the surface like that. So hopefully we we'll return to normal. Um, I hate coaching from my iPad. I hate coaching from my iPhone. Uh, but it is what it is, and we got to make the most of it until uh, things get back. Yeah, Adam? Yeah, I mean, we talk, we talk a lot about adversity. Um, so, you know, I've kind of taken this as a, like a life lesson for our guys. You know, obviously life's not going to always play out the way you want it to. So, you know, I, I try to stay positive, like Coach Harry said, um, you know, and, and talk to the guys. You know, you, you can control how you respond to this. You can pack it in and not work out and, you know, go quit or you can, you know, make the best of it and try to make yourself better. So, you know, try to, try to use it as a life lesson. And I guess from a personal standpoint, um, I, I found out how controlling I am as a coach. <laughs> and, and I realized in this situation that it's okay to give up control to a certain degree. Um, you know, there's so many things, you know, even down to Wi-Fi. You know, if a kid's Wi-Fi goes out, I'm so, you know, I need to be controlling. And I've, I've learned in the last month, there's just things you can't control. So, like Coach Dave and everyone said, you just have to adapt and adjust to what's thrown at you and, you know, try to, try to make the best of it. And Gina. Final well, comment. Uh, well I, I just think that, that getting back to what everybody said, and they're, they're all such very, very, very good points. I think it's become um, sports, but it's also become a lot about life with me. And, and, and I've talked to the kids a lot actually about keeping up their academics along with this because that's going to help their, their athletics in the end um, because now everybody's pretty much on pass fail. And I've sort of related that to basketball in another way and said, you know, you, you, you can pass or fail or pass with distinction. And I'm like, you know, at least pass with distinction and give it your best because you don't want to play a game. And, and when you lose the game, you're, you're going to lose it because, you know, you didn't try hard enough. And that carries through. And um, I think it works a little bit. But I also think that girls are a little bit different than boys in a lot of ways because they don't get rid of their energy quite as, as physically. I mean, I have grandsons and granddaughters, and I have two sons. And they, they, the, the males act very, very differently. So I think for the girls, they have to have an outlet. And, and uh, myself and my assistant coach um, let them know that we're available, but we also pu are pushing them a little bit, um, especially our older kids who are going to be the leaders next year, because some of them got a little bit lazy. Season's a long way off, and, and um, you can't let them get lazy. It's, it's, uh, so, so I think it's, it encompasses a whole lot, um, but I think that in the end, as horrible as this has been and so terrible for people who have lost people, I think we can, you know, hopefully we'll all learn some of this and we'll make them better, not only better athletes, but better people. So yeah, that's what we're looking at. Yeah. And Al, I mean, Ali, this was great for me too. I love, first of all, just, you know, speaking with coaches from other areas is phenomenal. And Adam, David, and Brian, just hearing their perspective on another sport. I mean, I could listen to Gina talk for hours about hoops, but it was really neat to hear uh, other coaches in other sports. And, you know, coaching's coaching. doesn't matter what it is. And just, hearing some of the advice you guys gave is definitely things I'm going to use for myself moving forward. So thank yeah, you. It's definitely a pleasure sharing ideas with everybody. A, yeah. lot, of, a lot of different you know, great concepts, great ideas, a lot of wisdom for sure. And you just tell everybody on the panel, they're very passionate about what, what we do and how much we just really, really like helping kids. So Ellie, thank you for putting this together. It was a great idea, Ellie. You did a great job. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you Thanks, all. Ellie. This was awesome. So nice to meet all you guys. You too. Yeah, nice to meet you and good right. luck to everybody. Stay right. strong. Thank you too. That's all my right? Stay healthy. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you, Stay Ellie. strong. Bye. Take care. Bye.